Hi everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Chanel Suggs, the Duchess of Cybersecurity, the author and instructor for this course. The focus of this section shall be to go over an introduction to computer forensics. In this series of videos for this section, the main focus shall be defining what is computer forensics, understanding the advancements in the field, as well as the roles. With that said, let's get started. Today we'll be covering Defining Computer Forensics, Video 1 for Section 1. The U.S. CERT defines computer forensics as a discipline that combines the elements of law and computer science to collect and analyze data from computer systems, networks, wireless communications, and storage devices in a way that is admissible as evidence in a court of law. So when you think about forensics, this is important because it helps to ensure the overall integrity as well as looking at the survivability of your computer and your network infrastructure. This can help organizations when it comes to considering computer forensics as a basic element for their defense and depth approaches when it comes to their network and their computer security. So if organizations as well as agencies begin to ignore computer forensics as well as those practices, you increase your chances when it comes to risk because you're destroying vital evidence as well as having a forensics evidence rule and admissible when it comes to having to have that evidence admissible within court. Computer forensics is important for any organization, especially when you're looking at how this can save you money. Making sure that you're allocating a portion of the information technology budget when it comes to assessing your computer and your network security within your organization. So when you think about what are those objectives com to computer forensics, it's to be able to recover, analyze, as well as preserve computer and network related materials in a way that this information can be presented within a court of law. To be able to identify the evidence quickly, as well as estimate what is that potential for impact of malicious activity to an organization or a victim as well as being able to assess the intent as well as identify the perpetrator. So when it comes to the necessity of computer forensics, it's looking at and ensuring the integrity and the existence of computer and networks. Then there's the extraction, the process as well as interpretation of that factual evidence. So this helps you to improve the attacker to prove the attacker's actions within a court of law. So you want to make sure that you extract the data properly, make sure you have processes in line and in place to ensure that you collect the necessary elements to present your findings in court. And so when you think about the overall integrity of an organization, when it comes to continual existence, of their systems and their network infrastructure, you wanna make sure that you're validating this information as well. You wanna be able to efficiently track down perpetrators from different parts of the world. Also being able to protect the organization's money as well as valuable time. 
So when you consider the money aspect of an organization, when there's a data breach, this causes organizations money. It also costs them valuable time in order to track down the perpetrators. Looking at what was actually attacked within the organization, what data was touched, what systems have been compromised, having the necessary staff in place, knowing what is required in order to actually find out what really happened within the organization to ensure that the organization will be secure going forward and that those vulnerabilities are remediated. When you consider the advantages of forensics readiness, this helps you when it comes to gathering evidence within the organization as well as to improve the organization's defense. It's subject to a lawsuit as well. If there's an event of a major incident, this helps to have you be fast and efficient when it comes to investigation processes, when it comes to conducting and corresponding those actions that can be followed with minimum disruption to the business. So when you think about forensic readiness, you need to be able to extend a target when it comes to information security, being able to look at a water threat area from a cybercrime, for example, such as considering fraud or extortion, as well as intellectual property within the organization. Being able to reduce expenses and investigation times within your organization, for example, having a fixed and structured approach when it comes to storage of that evidence. Also, it can also improve the overall processes and simplify law enforcement interface. As well as in case of a major incident, proper as well as in-depth investigation can be conducted if you have the necessary requirements and this just shows you the benefits when it comes to having a forensic readiness in place within an organization. Whenever you're setting up your forensic readiness within your organization, you want to look to define what is the business risk scenarios that's going to require this type of evidence. Identify the available data sources you may have, as well as any different types of evidence. Determining what are going to be your requirements when it comes to gathering evidence for your organization. Establishing those capabilities when it comes to gathering evidence in support of the evidence rules. Look at developing a framework in order to govern the evidence management process. Design your targeted security monitoring controls in order to help you to detect events, for example. Consider specifying the criteria for escalating incidents when it comes to your formal investigations within your organization. Conduct ongoing training to educate your employees as well as your stakeholders on their organizational roles. Also documenting and representing your evidence based on your findings as well as your conclusions and also ensuring that legal review to facilitate any types of events within your organization as well as considering what are going to be those incident response actions. Also, you want to make sure that you understand the costs and benefits when it comes to implementing a readiness program within your organization. Try to figure out the best systematic methodology that you can use. And making sure that you having, for example, continued education within your organization. When you start considering what are the objectives for forensic readiness is to collect acceptable evidence without any types of interfering business processes. Also, looking at how you gather your evidence. So you want to gather evidence that is going to be targeted when you're looking at potential crimes as well as disputes that can adversely impact the organization. 
You want to make sure that you're allowing investigations to proceed at a cost proportionate to the incident. And you want to ensure that evidence makes a positive impact on the outcome based on any types of legal action within the organization. To reiterate, whenever you're looking at creating forensic readiness within your organization, you want to make sure that you're defining the business state that needs this type of digital evidence. You want to identify what is going to be the potential evidence that will be available for investigation. Determining the evidence collection requirements. Looking at the procedures for securely collecting the evidence that meets those requirements within a physically, forensically sound manner. Establishing policies for securely handling and storing the collected evidence within the organization. Ensuring the observation process is going to be aimed in order to detect as well as prevent the important incidents within an organization. You want to ensure that the investigative staff are going to be completely capable of any task that will be related to handling as well as preserving that evidence because you do not want to have someone there that is going to be trying to preserve and handle that evidence that does not have the proper capabilities because this could cause you to be unable to use this evidence within a court of law. You want to make sure that you're documenting all of the activities that are performed as well as their impact and ensuring authorized review in order to facilitate actions within responses to those incidents within the organization. This concludes this section on defining computer forensics. Within this section, we discuss what is computer forensics. We also looked at the objectives as well as why is it necessary to have computer forensics. Looking at forensic readiness and why it's important to have this within an organization. What are the advantages? What are the objectives when it comes to forensic readiness? And how do you apply this within the organization? What processes should you instill in creating a forensic readiness plan within your organization as well as understanding that it's very necessary that you have capable staff there when it comes to preserving and collecting that evidence and how if you don't have the proper people there that has the proper training to conduct as when it comes to preserving and collecting this evidence how this could cause a lot of issues when it comes to allowing the evidence that you have collected to be admissible within a court of law. Up next, we'll be discussing advancements of computer forensics, video two for section one.